We talked about basketball earlier on the show. We're going to have a conversation now around the D-Tigress. Let me yield to Austin. Uh, Austin, uh, we're approaching that period where we will be talking some basketball. Uh, the ladies are in the news. Of course, they've made us proud. Proud, yeah. I mean, they didn't just win the Afro Basket Championship in Rwanda. They made records. They did it in style. Let's start with the coach that was appointed, I think, one week to the tournament, Coach Rena Wakama. She's just 31, and she made record as the first female coach to win the Afro Basket. The D-Tigress, they were on fire. In the opening game against Congo Diaro, they destroyed their opponents. Next game against Egypt, they swept Egypt aside. The game against Mozambique in the quarterfinals was tough, but they dug deep, showed champion stuff, and they won it. And against the host, Rwanda, in the semifinals, they did their thing. They humiliated Rwanda in front of their home fans. And then they met Senegal again in the final, familiar foes. And the D-Tigers won that final game 84 to 74, 10 points difference. Look, let me tell you one thing about this team. is the resilience, is the winning mentality to go out there to win a fourth Afro basket championship in a row it's not an easy task. Sarah Ogoke is the captain of the D-Tigress. And for the record, she's also winning a first consecutive title uh, with the D-Tigress. What a story. And she's a medical doctor and she's running all of this. Let's go to New York. Still, Sarah Ogoke joins us on the show now. Good evening, champ. Welcome to Sports Tonight. Hey, what's going on? How are you? Good to have you on the show, Sarah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Happy to be here. It's always happy to be here, Austin. I know, Sarah, I cannot explain it. I'm looking for adjectives to qualify how proud I am of the <laughs> team for what you did in Rwanda. So I tell the viewers, what sort of experience was it for the team getting ready to go to Rwanda, not having the sort of preparation that you need, and then you still did what you did? Well, you know, it was... A mission. We went. We went there on a business trip to Kigali, and mm. the good thing about this team, all we had a nice mix of veterans as well as new players that came in with the mindset of although we haven't been together for six weeks or eight weeks or anything like that, we are going to make sure we do everything in our power to get better every single day, and that was our focus. Wow! Awesome. The game against. Mozambique, how difficult was it? Mozambique, uh, they're like, they just come at you in a swarm. Those girls, they're athletic, they're agile, they're quick, they have stamina, they have excellent coaching. Um, I play in their local league, funny enough, so I know all those girls very well and, and the type of you know, discipline that they take going into basketball games. And, and the game was tough. It was extremely tough, but I knew that Mozambique was a team that kind of just got unlucky to be set up to meet us in the quarterfinals because that team was a team that could have easily gone to the championship round or the semifinals. But uh, we were able to stick through and, and we were able to get that win. Awesome. I'll, I'll hand it to my, to my colleague in Lagos. All right, um, Sarah, thanks for joining us. Uh, hear me here. I, I want to ask you, I, I read some comments uh, you made uh, on social media about people not expecting much from uh, the, the ladies. D did it bother you uh, that, I mean, three-time champions back-to-back -back, that you could go into a tournament and people weren't expecting much? Well, you know, this is just me just, you know, just writing things on, on Twitter. But the reality of the situation is that, you know, it was a almost a brand new team and there really wasn't a whole lot of expectation and with me having an opportunity to captain the D-Tigers for the first time I knew that if we lost it would have been oh the team that Sarah Goke captain they lost they didn't you know retain the championship I also knew that if we were able to pull this off that you know I would also be able to Hello? Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Can go on. Yeah. So I, I knew that if we'd be able to, you know, pull off this achievement, that I'll still be able to retain my dignity. And so I really took it upon 
on myself to do my best to lead as best as possible. You know, we had a phenomenal coach, phenomenal players, and we were able to just get the job done by God's grace. All right, uh, let me throw this in before I yield back to my colleague. So wh what lies ahead? I know we, we, we will be, in a few minutes, we'll be talking about pre-Olympic um, qualifying tournaments. And so, I mean, what, what lies ahead? What's, uh, w what, what are you girls looking forward to? Uh, or you're waiting for uh, the guidance and direction of uh, the governing body here in Nigeria? So now that we've won Cup of Nations, there's still one, you know, maybe two more steps um, for us to go through in our process of qualifying for the Olympics. Um, there may be a competition in November that's relating to the World Cup. I'm not really sure. But what I do know for sure is that in February, we will be playing in what they call the FIBA Olympic Qualifying Tournament, which is typically hosted in Europe and will have four teams and three of those teams will get an automatic ticket to the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. Awesome. Let's let's bring it back to uh, that remarkable achievement at the Afro Basket Championship. You guys came back to singing and dancing, and um, you met the first lady. What did she say to the team? So um, I wasn't able to make the trip because I had to, you know, rush back to work. But um, my teammates told me that, you know, she told us congratulations and that she was really proud of us. Um, she gave us individual cards saying that specifically, you know, we've done well and that she's truly proud of us and that um, we should continue to inspire women and girls all over the country, all over the world, um, as we've been doing. Awesome. Uh, Sarah, let's talk about you. Yes, you. Tell the world, how do you do it? Fourth Afro Basket title, and you did it consecutively. You are in the medical field. Sarah Ogoke is a surgeon. You're captain of the D Tigers. You must be superhuman, Sarah. Well, just to clarify, I'm a, I'm a fourth year medical school student. Next year, I'll be a, considered a full time surgeon. But um, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing outside of persistence, you know. I failed countless times, and I always am the type of person to never give up. I look back at mis what mistakes I've made. I look back at whatever I could do better, and I just keep going. You know, that's my motto: just continue to just do the best you can every single day, whatever time I have outside of reading. I train, you know. I, I use it as an outlet. I use it as a as a way to you know release tension from you know, reading and you know, doing surgeries and things like that in the hospital. And it's just, it's, I've, been, I've been blessed to be able to do both and have the option of, you know, choosing both passions that I, and per, choosing and pursuing both passions that I, that I truly love. Yeah, because um, there are young girls out there watching you now. And some people have this annoying opinion that for you to be a full-time sports person, education must suffer. Uh, how important is it to combine sports and education? You know what? I would not suggest anybody to do what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm literally, <laughs> I'm literally I'm patting my head and rubbing my stomach as if I have six arms. You know, I, I, it's, it can be stressful at times, but I just, I know what I want in this life. You know, I'm, I love medicine. I love basketball. Anybody that chooses to pursue both, it's not easy. Um, I believe that they should just stay focused, have a solid foundation, people who support you, surround yourself with people who are driven towards the same goals as you, and just don't give up. You know, that's the most important thing is just don't give up. Whatever you put your mind to, you know, as women, as Nigerians, you know, you can do anything. Yeah. If I let you go, Sarah, the four pits. That's, that's massive. And you guys did it in a row with different teams, with a new coach, the pressure. Uh, you, if you have one request to make to the administrators of basketball in Nigeria, to the government, now that whenever you ladies represent the country, you win, what is that thing that you want them to do to, you know, keep women's basketball going? Honestly... Personally, I just want to thank the federal government, thank 
the MBBS, thank our administration, thank our president, you know, just my, I just want to give my utmost gratitude to just, first of all, having them include me in this whole process, you know, representing Nigeria, in my opinion, is a privilege, it's not a necessarily a right, you know, and I, and that's how I look at, uh, look at it. So I'm thankful, I'm thankful, and I just hope that the, the program continues to improve, to find ways innovative ways to continue to you know support the girls that are playing and improve, um, invest in grassroots basketball and just right. keep taking Nigeria basketball you know you know up 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 which in my opinion I've been playing for since 2011 I feel like it's been going up and I, I think it should continue that's right Sarah Abuki okay. thank you so much for your time congratulations once again we love you guys for what you did for basketball in Nigeria stay focused and keep winning thank you you're welcome. It's a pleasure.